Uh, welcome to new Selfishware's podcast, and this time around it's all about Selfishware's 3.4 that introduced the new multi-user support. And I want to talk in a bit more of detail what this means and how it works and looks like. Keep in mind this is based upon the early access version, which is some kind of release candidate version for early adopters, so it might change until the final version is out. Let's take a look at the implementation of multi-user support. So first of all we go into settings and we can see here the users entry. If we click on this we can see all the users that we have in our system. By default if you're upgrading from SafeShare 3.3 you only will have the U device owner admin. If you create a new user, just like me here for example, L Electronics, you have a second user there. You can create up to six new users but those new users have restrictions. So they are not admins, they are not device owners, they have not the possibility to set every setting available to install applications, to run Android applications and so on. So there are some limits to the new users. You can further limit, it, limit those user rights just by pressing long on a user and then say for example turn off calls and SMS which will disallow this user to use calls or SMS. So basically it renders the smartphone into yeah, a fancy media player. And of course you have the option also to rename and delete a user. Keep in mind if you create a new user, the username that you type in should be relatively short and easy to use if you want to use it later for some terminal action or something like this. Because this initial name that you give this user is the one that will be used for the usernames uh, the, ch the group in the system, you know, username and group are two most important things in a Linux system that are there for file attributes, for example, but also for creating the user uh, folder. If I go here and list my home folder, you can see that there's an LL Electronics uh, user. So all the data of my LL Electronics user will be listed there. Interestingly, Though it states it is um, my user is the privileged user is the admin user. If I just want to go into this uh, folder here right now, you can see it says permission denied. I don't have the permissions for this. What I can do, of course, is um, I can just simply go in here and type in devil su, which allows me to get root privileges, and then I have the option to. Uh, type in my super sec secret password and then I can see the contents of this user. So if for some reason you want to back up the user's data or copy something onto the user's data, you have the ability to do so. But keep in mind you have to use your privileges uh, as administrator, as root user to do so. So use devilsu for this. If you don't have devilsu enabled, you have to enable it under development settings. And this is also very interesting. If we go in here, you can see this entry. Where is it? Um, developer tools only available on your admin, on your device owner's user. This is not available for normal users. Another thing that I want to in, uh, say with this is like the terminal is not available for normal user. And as the terminal is not available, also SSH access to the device is not available for the normal or additional user that you create. It is only available for the device owner of this device. The restrictions of installing applications, no matter if native applications or Android applications, is not everything. On the other user, if I switch to the other user, you will see that Android applications are missing completely, no matter if the device owner installed them or not. This is simply because Android support is not available for those additional users. So the additional users don't have the ability to uh, have access to Android applications. So let me unlock this. And we are back into my LL Electronics user. And what you can see here is there is no Android application currently available. So the Android app support that SafeSharePress usually has 
is not available for additional users and you have no possibility currently to activate this. I'm pretty sure Yola is working on support for this. Uh, this needs of course then a um, user separation for the Android processes as well and this can uh, be one of the reasons why it's not activ activated right now for the 3.4 release. Maybe it will be available later in later releases. So this, these are, this is a basic overview of the multi-user support in SafeShares where you can find the files and so on. Let me go into settings to show you some of the restrictions course you get some tutorials here as well uh, some of the restrictions you have the possibility to choose your wireless LAN there's no problem with this and it also connects to wireless LANs here but keep in mind if you have wireless LANs already uh, um, so Wi-Fi networks already connected on your main user they will not automatically connect um, for the additional user you have to uh, edit your or enter your password again for those networks to connect to. Mobile network, like I said, can be disabled if you like to, and uh, USB uh, support is there, so you have the possibility to connect this uh, to your um, computer, for example, and then transfer files via MTP. This will be uh, possible. What's not possible is uh, SSH support, so transferring files over SSH is not possible here. NFC is available as well as Bluetooth. There's no problem with this. There is also the possibility to set a pin code for your or a device lock code even. And there is also the possibility to go to users. But what you can do here is very limited. You are not allowed to create a new user here. For example, you can see it's not there and you cannot really edit anything for other users and for yourself you are also not available uh, not able to uh, edit anything. So you cannot just say, okay, I want to uh, disable rights for calling or SMS. This is only available for the administrator of this device. Another interesting thing is like, if you are upgrading from an older Selfish OS version, like 3.3 or even earlier, then the main user will be called Nemo. If you install SafeShares freshly on an Xperia device, for example, the default user, the administrator will be called default user. So one word. And the account and the uh, home folder will be called default user instead of Nemo. So keep this in mind if you want to transfer files and uh, some other things to not forget this. To switch between users. I can go into settings and do this, but I also can just pull down and in this pull down menu I have the option to see the user that I currently am running as. So LL Electronics. If I click on this, it will allow me to change to another user. This configure button here is not for the user. I think its placement is a bit wrong. It should be a bit higher um, or there should be like some kind of indicator that this has nothing to do with configuring the user. If you click on this, it allows me to organize the icons on my top menu or to go to the settings of the top menu uh, instead. So I can switch just like this back to my admin user. So those are the settings and some of the insights of the multi-user support of Safish OS. Of course, you have the app separation so every application that appeared in my restricted user will have a different configuration than the apps that appear on my main user and of course uh, this not only is for apps but also for settings you can see i have a different wallpaper here i have different uh, ringtones even i have like muted the sound here and many many other things as well so this is everything for my overview of multi-user support on Savage OS 3.4. If you have some questions regarding multi-user support, you can ask them in the comment section. Otherwise, just like, subscribe, and have a nice and safe day, hopefully. And until the next time, bye.